If you were watching Centerpoint on Friday, you heard about a more than enthusiastic campaign event in Arizona centered around the former news anchor, now turned candidate, Carrie Lake. Here's a taste of what went on. I handed my life 100% over to God, truly for the first time. And I can't tell you, he has brought me on the wildest ride. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Come on, can you jump a little bit tonight? One, two, three, yeah! And joining us now, the other person that the attendees were cheering for, Sean Foyt. Sean, welcome back. Hey, thank you. So good to be with you guys. So Thanks you for performed me. for that uh, Carrie Lake crowd there. Uh, I'm curious, did you offer your performance uh, to Carrie Lake or did her camp reach out to you? What was the origin of that? Uh, her, her camp reached out to me and uh, of course I was super honored to join them. Uh, we had, uh, in 2020, we went through, took Let Us Worship into Phoenix and Actually, I got fined ten thousand dollars for worshiping God outside. No way in that town, and so I felt yeah, and so I felt like this was really cool how God's flipping the script. He has this a person that loves Him, that loves the church, that loves worship, and invited me. He's going to be the next governor of the state of Arizona, and so I was like, hey, <laughs> let's do this, and I was excited to be there. Incredible time, mm -hmm. it was incredible. But, but before we get into flipping the script, did did you pay that fine? Yeah, I think we negotiated down. Alliance Defending Freedom was amazing. They represented me, and I think we ended up negotiating it down. But yeah, it was one of the many cities, um, one of the many states across America we got fined in 2020 and 2021. Well, good for you. Uh, you know, I would, I would go back and appeal some of those fines because I think the science is now in your favor and your, your good health, apparent good health, I should say, is, well, <laughs> is testament to that. Well, we got the science in our favor, we got the Constitution in our favor, and we got the Bible in our favor. So, yeah, we're doing pretty good. Well, that, that's interesting that uh, Carrie Lake has, has taken a real liking to you. Tell me about uh, your relationship with her. You know, it's amazing. I love these God stories. You know, when, when God picks somebody that, that, you know, the world may least expect, you know, somebody that came from TV that wasn't a politician, that kind of knows behind the scenes of media, and the corruption there, and then uses that person with that knowledge to actually propel them to be a leader in the state. It's pretty amazing. Just hearing her testimony, hearing her heart for God, hearing her story of salvation, and really hearing her vision for where she wants to see her state go in the future, uh, I'm all in it. Like I, anybody that fears God like she does, leading a state, I just think it's, it's amazing. That's where we need to go. You know, I've, I've never met her, I've never interviewed her, but I've seen many, many sound bites over the last several months from her, and I'm struck again and again and again by just how tough she is. And she's got this uh, inner source of, of confidence to confront people um, who she believes to be in the wrong. And she does it really forcefully, but she does it calmly without anger. I wonder if that's where that comes from. Yeah, I mean, I think she does it with facts. You know, yeah. she's very articulate, but I, but she's also got this mama bear thing on her that yeah. we need in America right now. You know, that's gonna stand up for children, that's gonna stand up for the church, stand up for religious liberty, you know, stand up against this agenda to sexualize um, our kids. And that's the one thing I really appreciate, her, her boldness, her persistence, her unwavering spirit. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited a week from today, she'll be the next uh, governor of Arizona. Uh, what, what's your sense, having performed for several crowds like this, about the enthusiasm level you see for these midterm elections among the evangelical crowd and, and Christian music followers? Yeah, I mean, it's been amazing. I mean, the, the, you know, two days before that, we had the largest worship and prayer event in Washington, D.C. this year on the National Mall. This was our third year in a row. And we had thousands of people out there. And, and the day before that, we were inside of the Capitol building worshiping with hundreds of Christians. I think there's a sense and an expectation that God's gonna do something really amazing in these midterm elections. I think that you know, with the many, en what the enemy meant for evil, with the lockdowns, with the targeting of the church, God's turning it around. And we're gonna see an incredible shift take place across America. We're gonna see more candidates that love God 
uh, more candidates that are going to stand up for the church and for the Bible, like Carrie Lake. We're seeing a lot more of those candidates arise, and there's a lot of support for them across America. Mm -hmm. There's there is a potential downside to that, and it is that after the midterm elections, if your side wins as they are expected to, there's going to be a lot of anger out there. How should Christians deal with that anger from the other side? Yeah, I mean, I think you you know you just if you win or your candidate wins, or whatever you just you you do it with grace, you know, and and you you try to come together after the 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 brutal. <laughs> you know, collision of these elections, you, you come together after this polarization and you say, let's find ways to work together. You know, I think for the church, what, you know, uh, we're launching seven days of prayer that starts tomorrow where we're gonna gal gather 100,000 intercessors across America to be praying. And I think we go into the midterms prayerfully, you know, trusting the Lord and we come out of them prayerfully, believing that those people that he's put in office that he's gonna use. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that. You, seven days, you're going to be in several different cities. How's that working? Uh, I'm going to be in several different cities, but but really we're, we're launching and mobilizing 100,000 believers across America that want to pray for these elections. And I just felt in my spirit, the Lord woke me up the other night in the middle of the night and, 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 and began to speak to me about how this election we, uh, was going to, like what happens is going to take place largely because the church prayed. And so um, I'm going to do whatever I can do to mobilize people to pray. And every single day, we're going to send out a list of prayer requests. We're going to send out prayer points and verses that pe everybody, all people across America and the world can join together as we take a journey over the next seven days. So people can sign up for that at lettusworship.us, lettusworship.us. And we would love to have you guys be a part of this prayer warrior army. Sean Foyt, you're doing great work out there. Uh, best of luck to you, and uh, we'll see if it works. Oh, and by the way, uh, contest those fines. You really need to do that. Really, really. Uh, great <laughs> All right, to talk I'll to contest you. the fines, <laughs> and, may, and maybe I'll ask for donations. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you Have go. a great day. Thank right. you. <laughs> you too, Sean. Bye bye. And that's going to do it for Center Point. Coming up next on TBN, Andrea Bocelli. Matt and Lori Crouch join the Bocellis in Italy as Andrea Bocelli shares why he plans to embark on the ultimate spiritual journey on horseback, no less, along the Via Francesina. I'm Doug McKelway. We hope you have a great night.